Hi everyone, it's Fjordström. In this video I'll be reviewing the iPad Pro 2018 after almost two months of use. This video will consist of three parts. Number one, has this been my laptop replacement, yes or no? And what is my workflow then with this thing? Number two is in which cases a MacBook is still needed next to an iPad Pro. And number three is the hardware, about the keyboard, the pencil and the tablet itself. So here we go. So the biggest question is, have I been using this as a laptop replacement? And my personal answer is yes, I have. 27 hours of productivity, 23 hours of education and 5 hours of entertainment. This is my average week, but before you hit the dislike button, but I do understand that not everybody can use this as a laptop replacement. If you need all, every single feature of Word or Excel, then of course you better get a MacBook or even a Surface Pro. But this still can be a working and productivity device and that is actually my goal in this video how this iPad Pro works for me okay first of all over here I have my uh, my calendar then I have files the files app which I personally find a good app I mean uh, I'll come back to that later about files but file management on iPad Pro actually does work at least for me it does I also have Safari of course I also have Chrome just in case I need um, a second browser so I use iCloud photo libraries so all my pictures and videos are immediately uploaded into iCloud and I can then edit them everywhere. Now for offline editing, I will again show you a bit later in this video how I do offline editing without the need of iCloud. Now that's photos, we have Keynote. Um, as an educator, Keynote is very important and if you do presentations a lot, well, Keynote is definitely the way to go. I have here presentation, I can uh, I can tap whatever I want, I can use custom font, so for example here I have everything for styles, here are all my fonts, if you need a specific font, for example Open Sans I have over here, or Rubik for example, but you can just install them as well, I have an app called Fontier, so if you need certain fonts on your iPad Pro, well, that's how you install uh, fonts and they're available in all your, in all your apps. Uh, I can animate this text box or any, or any picture on this thing, I can add transitions, I can do anything, even sound. So for example, if I would open a, a sound file from my, from my files app or from an app called Yoink, Yoink acts as a kind of download manager or clipboard. Uh, you can just put stuff in that thing and it's available and everywhere. So just let go. Over here I have an mp3 which I downloaded from uh, the internet through Safari. You can select it then just drag it over here and then the sound app or the sound is over here, the file I mean. Then I can tap it and animate it to decide in which order the sound should appear. Okay, so that's Keynote. Now over here I have even more apps for productivity. I have my G Suite apps, uh, Sheets, Slides and Docs, um, which are important in my case uh, for work. We use G Suite, so I need those things to see them and to edit my, uh, to work together in files. Numbers, Pages and of course Keynote. Actually I use Pages as my main app for making documents because yeah, you can really customize anything you like and personally I find layouting in pages very easy. And then I have also notes apps. I have here the notes app from Apple, the notability, other education stuff. I have Google Classroom, very useful as you can uh, correct tests immediately here with your pencil. Then you also have the other stuff like Socrative, Kahoot, um, Padlet, Minecraft Education Edition which is useful uh, to teach coding. And then you have iDoSeo. This is a very very good app for teachers in general. Now what else do I have? Of course I also have my entertainment stuff, my social media over here. And then I have Outlook. Uh, the Apple Mail app is fine, just I like Outlook because it has a focused and a other tab which I find very useful. Then what else do I have? Especially for photos and videos, I have LumaFusion of course for video editing. Again, the best app that's out there right now for iPad. Affinity Photo, Pixelmator, also apps that, that I use very often. Pixelmator I use for my overlays in my videos. So for example, if I'll just show you LumaFusion, I've been using this for my video the past, uh, actually since November. So I have my uh, my watermark, I have my end screen, as you can see here, this is one more layer. I have my video over here. So over here I have also three layers of audio, which is really useful um, in yeah, when, when you're editing a video with a background sound. It exports really fast, especially in 1080p, it exports really fast. It doesn't heat up. It's, yeah, it's really more fun to use, honestly, uh, using the shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. Here they all are. There's even a second tab. So you really have so many keyboard shortcuts. It's really a very good app. If you have, for example, really short clips, then you can use this Apple Pencil, of course, for uh, more detailed editing. 
definitely recommend it if you make videos. We have then um, Affinity Photo, which I used for making a Christmas card, and yeah, okay, I use that for making Christmas cards, and Pixelmator for my overlays. Now one thing that the iPad Pro gets criticized about is about the lack of a file management system, or the lack of a system, because actually it does have a file manager, it has the Files app, okay? Uploaded in uh, iOS 11, and personally I'm actually very fine with it, I'm really okay with it. Now over here I have, for example, iCloud Drive, and on the left side I also have Google Drive, and I can even add some more stuff that I just turned off, like uh, PDF Experts, and Creative Cloud from Adobe. Now if I would all go all the way down to my video, I can rename files if I would select one, I can rename it, can move it, and so on. If I want to move several stuff, I can just hold this, take one more, and so on, and I can move them all to, for example, here, 2018 backup, and it's moved, yeah? Uh, if I move stuff between folders, same thing, I can select a file, and I can tap move, and I can say where it has to go. Uh, you can make folders if you'd like, I'll make a folder with 2019 videos, and there it is, my folder is made, and it's being uploaded to iCloud Drive. Now I do understand that some people want to have an offline folder. So for example, when they are editing a certain video, everything is offline on the iPad itself, so they can just use it on the go or edit it on the go. So uh, what I do is I have here on my iPad, that's an offline, the offline part of the iPad. I go to LumaFusion, but then I have user media. And then here I can make a new folder called, for example, for this video, iPad Pro Review. And then I can select everything that I need, for example, these things over here, and drag them to my offline iPad Pro folder. Then everything gets uh, gets imported into that folder. Now this takes a while, especially if your photos are online in the cloud. So, okay, here we go. All of them are here right now, and if I open LumaFusion, then I can see the folder over here, just have to refresh it, iPad Pro Review, and I can start using these videos in my timeline. Now, what if you wanna have your own folder? I like, these are all the offline ones, but I cannot add one over here. That's a bit weird, honestly, and everybody probably agrees with that, that I hope in iOS 13 will just let us make our own uh, structure in here. Uh, personally, I always use iCloud Drive, but for some offline stuff, maybe I would like to have a folder over here, offline on my iPad. So it's not possible within here, what I can use is documents. And everything that you put here in the documents area of your <laughs> Documents 5 app is offline. So all these things, uh, for example, hello world, this is all offline. So you can browse over here, okay? And if you have a zip file, you just have to tap on it, it will unzip, and now I have again a third uh, hello world folder over here. Then you can do some more file management uh, over here. You can uh, upload stuff, you can star them and make them as your favorite, but it's not that much different. Of course, you can you can have uh, information. You can show the information of a folder, which is actually very useful, like the size, total size of a folder is very nice. You can use this. Drag and drop also works with this app, um, but you can also just use the files app in combination with it. So documents over here, these are the same things. That's the folder that I just have made uh, by unzipping the file. So you really can manage files here and use them in your workflow. Now the first reason was Google Sites. So this is an example of a Google Site. I can tap here uh, my website and I can add a text box and type over here, type over here. Now, that works all fine, but if I want to eventually publish it or share it with somebody, it doesn't work. So I thought I'll just do it in Chrome, but Chrome just gives the same thing. In other words, this isn't compatible. Now, this is personally, again, the only website that didn't work for me. Now, the second reason why I would use a MacBook, and I have used a MacBook in the past two months, was just to get my files from my hard drive. So that's one more thing. This has a USB-C uh, port, which is yeah, really cool that they finally changed to USB-C. I uh, can use many accessories to this thing. I'll make a separate video about it. But you can use anything with this thing, except hard drives, okay? Um, if I'd hook up my hard drive to this thing, nothing would appear or my photos would appear, but like other files, not. Which is a pity because I can edit all my files on this iPad, except ones from my hard drive. So you could buy a wireless hard drive or hook it up to something that would wirelessly transfer to this, but it's... Yeah, that's a workaround. It would be very nice if you could just connect it over here and then open it in the Files app. So there's one thing about the Files app that I do understand again. I do understand that the Files app should support 
hard drive, external hard drives. And while I do work in the cloud, while I, while I do work with AirDrop, if ever I need to transfer stuff to a Mac, if you want to make a backup, uh, like really a hard drive backup, then yeah, connecting it would be way, way more easy. Now the third reason why I would need my MacBook still is if I'm a Final Cut Pro user. Uh, but since my iPad Pro, I've been using LumaFusion. Now, LumaFusion is still a very, very good app. I've showed you just a second ago. Um, I mean, it has lots of stuff. I can add overlays. I can add a transition, for example, or a title. And that transition, I can just edit like this. So like this, presets. And they have many transitions to, to, to choose from. Sliding, wiping, uh, burst, flash, cross dissolve. The most basic things are here. And same goes with, with uh, text. For example, if I add an overlay title, I can use my own overlays or I can use the text overlay over here. And if I double tap, there are so many options right now. So it's still very good. Just again, if you want to have a specific style that you have seen on the, on the internet, if you found a plugin that is available in Final Cut Pro only, then of course you want to use Final Cut Pro. Okay, now we have arrived to part number three is the hardware. First of all, I have to say that if you have a bent iPad when you get it out of the box, yeah, that's of course unacceptable. Bring it back and I really hope that you get your money back or you could exchange it for a different iPad. Now mine, if you're very curious, mine isn't bent. Uh, personally, I've used this iPad in my backpack. I'm someone who travels with a backpack and a bike. So of course I close this thing and then I put it in one more case, which I've been using also for my MacBook uh, before I use this, uh, uh, this iPad Pro. So it's more protected than it just is like this. You should try the folio case in an Apple store and see if you can type on this thing. Shortcuts do work, I mean apps support shortcuts, even the home screen has a few shortcuts like uh, to bring up the dock, now of course I already have a dock or if I want to switch between apps, I can use my keyboard for that. Yeah, it would be nice to have an extra row of media control functions like play, pause, now I always have to do this and press and play, press and pause and so on. But it is very nice, it is if once you fold it, it's really thin, I mean yeah, it adds less bulk, less weight to this thing. Of course, it adds weight, but not that much. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's really fun to bring along. And the nice thing is that your Apple Pencil just st uh, yeah snaps on like this. But the quality of the screen itself, um, it's called Liquid Retina. I know it's LCD, it's just LCD, but this is a very, very good screen. It's probably hard to see right now on this video, but it's a very nice screen, very bright. The viewing angles are very good as well. I mean, yeah, this kind of viewing angle, yeah, it's very good. Uh, the screen is thin. I mean, it's not that thin, but I do notice a difference between this screen and my iPad Air 2, for example. Now we've come to the pencil. The pencil is really good. I mean, it's really great. Um, I can just double tap to switch between stuff. I can also just tap this and then this and then tap or switch between those stuff. Nice addition. Now some people do tap it by accident. And again, personally, I don't have the problem, but it might happen to you. So you should try it out maybe in the shop or you can just turn it off. Okay, you don't have really have much options right now. This is the only pencil that works on this iPad. But you can also just turn off that option. Yeah, it's really the best stylus I've ever used and it's also known for being one of the best or even the best stylus uh, there is right now. Okay and then we have come to the end of this review. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow I'll upload my year in review and we'll see each other next year. Happy New Year!